we wanted to build a business that aligned with the impact that we wanted to have on on the world which was restoring the dignity of hard work you know less shortcuts um, more earning Hey, welcome to The Empire Show. My name is Bedros Koulian, and this is an inside look. And today we've got two really awesome guests. Uh, they're gritty, they're blue collar, they are hustle, and they are humble. And they are the co-founders, two cousins of Few Will Hunt. And you might've seen me wearing the Few Will Hunt gear for the last maybe year and a half or so. Uh, I'm not only a customer of the brand, but I'm also a fan of the movement. And uh, so here today are Joey Bowen and Drew Beach. Welcome, dudes. Dude, thanks for having us. Thanks for joining me. So, um, you know, the, uh, the, the show is all about helping entrepreneurs in their money and their mission and their mindset, right? And so you guys have had this crazy ass, like hockey stick of a growth experience. It was the end of 2017 when you guys made your first sale, decided to actually sell something and then I mean, here we are 2021 and already 2020, if I'm not mistaken, was a seven figure year for you. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's a very short period of time to get an apparel company, a uh, brand, a movement, anything to hockey stick, having no background in an industry. So we're going to kind of dig into that today and we're going to not only share your wins and your losses, but also tips, tactics, strategies to help the audience so that they don't have to deal with the frustrations that you did as you came up as entrepreneurs. Um, so first off, I guess the thing um, th that I didn't know until I got on the phone with you sure. was that for some reason, when you sent me a box of clothes, I just assumed this is like this huge company with like hundreds of employees and, and all this thing. And then when we got on the phone and you're like, yeah, it's me and my cousin, you know, we both have like full-time jobs and, you know, and we're running this thing. Yeah. I was like, tell me more. Like, how did you guys even start the Fuel Hunt brand? Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, like you said, two cousins. And when we spoke that first time, we were warehousing out of Drew's basement. Mm. You know what I mean? So definitely humble beginnings. Um, Drew and I are like-minded. You know, we're hard workers. And we noticed a current in today's society that um, folks were no longer willing to work hard for the results that they wanted. They were preferring shortcuts over the hard work or the suffering sometimes that that's required to build something great. Um, so I think you know we wanted to build a business that aligned with the impact that we wanted to have on on the world, which was restoring the dignity of hard work. You know, less shortcuts, um, more earning. Yeah. What um, and, and you know whoever feels like they should chime in on this, feel free to chime in, but restoring the dignity that comes with hard work. What, what do you guys think happened to that? Because I feel it's completely gone. People lean into comfort and easy over adversity, suffering and doing the work. Mm -hmm. um, what happened to that? What happened to hard work? What happened to the dignity of that? I mean, in my opinion, um, technology and every efficiency we've created, we've also created in our lives. So we now can press a button, turn on the TV, or press a cup our hands to turn on the lights, and we just think of how we're always gonna make things easier, and we've done it to a fault, maybe. And nowadays in our education system as well, like we're not taught to lean into things, and when the going gets hard to not quit, we're just taught to and this is a whole other subject, but like fall in line with society and just do what you're meant to do or because society does it. Yeah. So it, it has been a lot easier for parents to encourage their kids to give up, start over. You don't like that. It's okay. Yeah. You know, it's, I guess it really started with the whole like, everyone gets an award for losing right. participation trophies for right. sure yeah. yeah yeah i think that um like drew was hitting on our convenience society has That's has right. has conditioned us that shortcuts not suffering yeah right yeah. is the path 
yeah. to doing something great. Yeah. And um, that's something that we didn't disagree or we, we disagreed with, yeah. you know, 100%. And, and, and li listen, like in, in life, we do look for efficiencies. Mm -hmm. Like it's just kind of the way it is. I imagine the caveman at some point was like, all right, I got this giant tree. I need to chop it down. I could either like pick at it with something or I could take a rock and tie a, you know, a tree branch to it and make a makeshift ax. So, you know, mm -hmm. easier is a, a weapon of survival, of efficiency. But now where we've gotten to live in this convenience economy, like you can literally, you just have to even, I remember traveling and well, I need to think ahead and book a cab for the night before. Mm -hmm. Now I just pull up an app and you're either Ubering, which is great, it's yeah. convenient, it's there. But then now food can show up, it's great, it's convenient. I don't even have to go out and start the car, go to a yeah. place. And the convenience economy, the convenience lifestyle, the comfort that comes with that has kind of led us into a place of comfort that's now counterproductive to the human race even surviving. Yeah. Surviving and, you know, everybody even reaching, you know, their goals, it started to condition us into thinking that the convenience that we have for food and taxis and things like that, that's the same type of convenience we can have for our goals. Right. Which is Ooh. not true, right? Well said. And what that's done is it's also bred entitlement. You know what I mean? So they were, you know, the, the shortcuts and the entitlement, they were two of the things that um, we saw happening in our places of business, our daily lives, society in general. And like I said, we wanted to create a movement, yeah. a community, a tribe of people that thought like us, or willing to work hard for their results, right, to combat what was happening. Yeah. That's a very powerful thing you said. The convenience of having Uber show up, Lyft show up, your food show up through Grubhub, hell, um, Instacart, mm -hmm. you know, like you could literally, I just found out the other day, my wife was like, hey, look, you can take like a banana and you can say, I want the green banana, the yellow banana, the one that's yellow with the brown spots or the fully ripe one. Yeah. And then you just pick the picture and then it just shows up to your door, yeah. right? Which is nuts, but we've taken that convenience and people go, well, everything in life should be that convenient. Right. And Which so is... if I try to launch a business and it didn't happen as quickly as the, my burrito showing up to my front door, Mm -hmm. then clearly this wasn't meant to be. I need to go restart, restart. Everyone's always restarting yep. and never really digging in and committing to the hard work required. I, you nailed it there. And so to that point, you're like, hey, we're gonna create this community. Like how did the two of you even start that dialogue that, hey, we think hard work has become an endangered species. Mm -hmm. Like how, how does that dialogue even start? Well, it started in our, our workplaces where we were, um, spending our day-to-day -day lives and every day we would call each other and uh, commiserate for lack of a better word but just connect on because it was you are the some of the people you surround yourself with and joey and i we felt like we were that for each other and we were like there's got to be people out there that think the way we do like about society and the way things going and how you have to work hard and have a, a relentless refusal to quit and we were like let's uh let's start a community and then joey one day was like well the community actually came after this but joey one day said you know what it's like it's like everybody wants to eat but few will hunt Oof. when we were commiserating yeah and now at this point you both had a job correct full t yeah full-time employment full-time yep. full mm -hmm. employment and so what did each of you do because i'm guessing it wasn't in online sales where you weren't no. like you know instagram marketers and all that stuff yeah, none of that <laughs> none of that um I was in I was in sales and selling t uh, custom apparel, so yeah. that's where our background comes in. I mean, the industry and yeah. Joe was in tech. Yeah, I was in technology, software architect. Yeah, software architect. But I was yeah. like, "What'd you say, dude?" Like, everybody wants to eat, but few will hunt. And I was like, "We gotta let's put that on a shirt." And then Joey went back. When was this in terms of timeline? Would you say? 2017? Yeah, 2017. Beginning of 2017. Okay, so beginning of seven, 2017, this is just a phone call, and you guys were commiserating, as you say. It was, a, da like, it was yeah. a daily meeting. Yeah, yeah. We yeah, had yeah, daily yeah. on our commute yeah, home. Yeah, yeah. We're both yeah, driving, through the, driving through the mean streets yeah. of Philly. But, but you know what? Yeah. There's, a, there's a big lesson there, right? Yeah. You could just be listening to either talk news and hear about how the world is falling apart. Absolutely. Wonderful. Everyone's, uh, you know, the economy sucks. Everyone's getting shot and raped and mugged and... And, and, and Biden or Trump or whatever the argument is, mm -hmm. or you can just brainwash yourself with music, which nothing wrong with that, but you get yeah. lost in music on that drive. Or you got the option of, 
hey, reaching out and supporting one another, and you had this like daily meeting over a phone on your on your yep. commute home, Just, where you guys are supporting and talking and connecting, and this idea of, yeah, you know what it's like. Everyone wants to eat, but few will hunt. Yep. And then Drew's like, hey, wait a minute, that's got to be on a shirt. Did you say that okay. jokingly, or is that? No, I was like, I, I was like dead serious and we it. if we put that on the shirt I'll, I'll fucking rock that shit every day yeah. like yeah, i was yeah. like that's I, I rock it that's literally the one that's wearing out the fastest yeah yeah so uh a little more backstory i'm a bow hunter yeah right so that mantra is something that we say at my family cabin as like a celebration of the hunt sure. of resilience you yeah. know what i mean of uh self-reliance yeah you know what i mean so that's where the mantra came from yeah. but it's applicable um in pretty much every aspect of life every category of life exactly and so when was that online community created yes yeah, so we started that in 2017 because and that was our avenue to sell that to, when we decided we wanted to sell that shirt because we originally considered just printing them for ourselves yeah yeah, yeah. and when we decided like yeah like there's other people out there that think like us and work like us you know we were on instagram at the time we thought that was the best place to build a community and uh although we had a shirt we weren't actively selling it. There was no selling environment. What we were doing was creating content and posts to attract people to the community. So to attract like-minded individuals yeah. to build that movement, that force. Yeah. Now let me ask you this. Was that <clears throat> a strategic play? Like, all right, we're going to launch an Instagram page to create a community of like-minded people and then ultimately we'll sell them something? Or was it like, hey, we just want to be able to connect with like-minded people? Yeah, now there's no... I wish I could say there was a greater strategy at play, but no, there wasn't. I think it was out of uh, the pure intention of building that community, that yeah. tribe. Yeah. And uh, we thought, hey, it would be cool if they bought our shirt too. Yeah, yeah, really. yeah. yeah. And oh, by the way, all, if they, they bought the hey, shirt. we also have this shirt. Yeah. yeah. And it was yeah. literally just one shirt. Yeah, yeah. one shirt. Literally. We have. Uh, that. Didn't sell very well. It wasn't. Didn't sell very well. I don't. I don't. No one has the. I, it was my my design expertise. Yeah, is that so it wasn't that to sell phone well. call, Joey, We were so. <laughs> So amped up on after that phone call that Joe went back and did some design work on Microsoft Word. Yeah, and it was Photoshop, man. Yeah, was no, it was, <laughs> and uh, he sent it to me. I'm like, let's print it, and we put yeah. a black text on a gray shirt. It yeah. was literally just text at that point, and uh, we I, I have the first one framed, and that's the only that's probably the old, the last living one that gotcha. I mean, not not many people bought it. When um, so so. If I remember correctly, was it November of 2017 that you guys sold, like actually made your first dollar selling the shirt? Yeah, we had a, we had a come to Jesus moment, and you probably remember the question that I asked. You know, do we have a blog or do we have a business here? Yeah. Because we're both fully employed. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're creating content, which um, on a daily basis for that IG page. Long form Instagram yeah. content for that page, and uh, a lot of sacrifice was involved. It was time consuming to make sure that we were putting out quality content that added value to the members of our community. And we're sitting on a bunch of shirts. And I called Drew and I said, Look, you know, we have a community, but do we have a blog or do we have a business here? Do we, are we really serious about starting a business that aligns with the impact that we want to leave mm -hmm. on this world? And uh, we said, Let's sell some shirts. So we created a, I think it, it may have been a Cyber Monday um, deal, something like that. Yeah, and the, okay. the selling environment was created. Yeah. And uh, we sold some shirts that day. All right. So yeah. let's, let's dive into that for a moment. And then I want to take you guys back to, like, you know, your guys' background and, and even deeper, like, you know, childhood, upbringing, and all that stuff. Because clearly all this stuff, you know, sometimes work ethic, grit, hustle is factory installed. Other times, it's a combination of factory installed and upbringing, mm -hmm. uh, but we'll get to that in a minute. So it's that it's that you know you guys are coming up on Cyber Monday. You have this conversation where, hey man, do we just have a blog here or do we have a business? We've got a box of shirts, and clearly you guys chose like, no, I think we have a business. Mm -hmm. Having never done any kind of online commerce, how do you guys even make the site? Like, what what does a site look like at that point? It was like this perfect, beautiful Shopify site? It was not. We were not on Shopify initially. Um, we were on another service that was primarily for blogs, yeah. which you could probably guess since yeah. we had a blog and not a business WordPress. at the time. Uh, uh, Squarespace. Squarespace. Close, yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Um, there, 
really, we were putting so much time and energy into the quality of our apparel, even though we just had one shirt. Yeah. We weren't discussing that. It's like the we best one that. shirt you'll ever wear. <laughs> right, but yeah. we weren't telling anybody that. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so the site was bare bones, you know, one skew. We may have added a hat by that time, you know, uh, an additional additional skew maybe, yeah. additional product. Yeah. Um, one page that just spoke about our mission, really. Yeah. Restoring the dignity of hard work and, you know, our goal of building a community of people that were going to change the tide in society, you know. Good on you. And talk about couldn't be a better timing of that. And so a big lesson here for the Empire Show audience is that speed of implementation trumps perfection every time. You know, you could have dove into the rabbit hole of, let me just see what the best online shops are built on, what plugins they have, what shopping carts they use, and graphic designers. And that is literally procrastination through perfection. Yep. Or do what you guys did, which was, hey, listen, we decided we're a business, and if we really want to create this community and, and do something big with it, we got to sell these shirts. And you leaned into Stop just creating a... Action. Yeah, action, exactly. Creating a site and making it happen. So let's now kind of backtrack because, you know, as I get to know you guys, there's like layers to you guys, right? And so you guys are from Philly. Definitely when you and I talked, I was like, okay, he does sound like he could also be a hitman, <laughs> you know, for hire on the phone. And, um, but I could also tell like there was this like East Coast directness that I really love and enjoy about you guys, this honesty and integrity that I could sense just come through over the texts, emails, phone calls. Um, where does this come from? Is the factory installed? Does it, you know, mom and dad, bring this up in you my my parents always told me to re respect first so i mean i think that's where our our genuineness or our uh integrity comes from i mean me personally like they always told me respect but uh and they always taught me hard work but they didn't teach me to value um thinking outside the box i would say so when i first told them i was going into sales i they weren't. Uh, they weren't happy at all. So they were. They were afraid that I was throwing away my salary, and I wasn't living the. Because you were commission based. Yeah, yeah, I was taking a huge risk of throwing away my my salary for commission, and then even up until recently, quitting my full time job, and going all in on this. It was just a matter of risk. It's just they didn't teach me that. So I think a lot of it came through for me personally was. Um, it started in my weight loss journey. When I was in high school, I was almost 300 pounds. And my girlfriend at the time broke up with me and I was sad as fuck because I was like, no other, no, no girl's ever gonna hook up with me. Like I was like 16, I was like never gonna have another girlfriend. I was like, I was like, and I went to my mom, I was like, mom, what do I gotta do to lose weight? And she said, eat chicken and run. And that's what I thought. I just eat, ate chicken and I fucking rode my bike because I was too fat to run. Those are, those are, those are good, <laughs> solid programs right there. Eat chicken and run. Yeah, I and love I, that. And I, that's what I did. And I just literally, I feel like ever since then, I've just had a, a mentality for just progress and, and being 1% better every day. So I think that's where it started for me, at least. Gotcha. Yeah. So... You know, there oftentimes is a significant life event that kind of tips the first domino, right? You know, you hear the alcoholic who's been a functioning alcoholic his whole career, his whole life, just making it through. There's that one thing that happens at that Christmas party or in the office. And it's like, oh, crap, he loses his job. He's about to lose his family. And he's like, I'm going to do something about this. And that's when they go into AA. Um, I see men who go come into the project, you know, a significant life event has happened, either panic attack, anxiety attack, some kind of a crisis where they feel like, all right, man, I'm about to turn 40, 45, 50, and I feel like I'm living someone else's dreams and I don't, I'm not following any kind of internal passion that I have. I don't feel like I'm living my purpose on this planet, yet I feel the gnawing of greatness within me. So it's a significant life event that like, that's in your face. Um, Hey, for you, man, it was like, look, you're almost 300 pounds and you're in high school and girlfriend breaks up with you and you're like, whoa, whoa, like this is painful enough where I need to do something about it. Yeah. And, you know, the podcast that we did a couple of weeks ago, Craig and I, where we talked about fitness is the ultimate gateway drug. Mm -hmm. And, you know, mom, I think, gave great advice. I know a lot of the fitness people watching this and nutrition people watching this. And I know that's my industry guys. And you're like, wait a minute, you can't just eat chicken and run. What about all the muscle you're gonna hold off? 
What about the results that you saw that gave you the confidence to wake up the next day and maybe you start doing some research. Maybe it wasn't ultimately all chicken and running. At some point you start doing resistance training and yeah. finding out macros. But you know what? In the beginning, if it just needs to be chicken and run, then God damn it, let it be chicken and run. Something to be said about keeping it simple. Yep. Right? And action. And like that's, uh, she gave me a simple plan. Clear like, action. Step. And even to this day, like back to one of the points you're making was like, everybody wants to start a business and, and they, I hear that all the time, but there's a lot of work and action that goes into actually making a business. And like you said earlier, you can sit around planning your business all day or planning your weight loss journey mm -hmm. all day, but it's just a matter of doing doing something. Yeah. I mean, I literally, when when I had my gyms, the premier results before I started a Fit Body Boot Camp, clients would come in and they, they were like, we're talking like 350, 400 pound clients, new, new clients. And I'm like, why Why did you wait till you're 350 pounds? Why not at 300? Why not at 250? Why not at 200 pounds? Well, around 250 pounds, I started doing the research. Do I want to do paleo and keto and this and that? And it's like, you know what? What if you just, now, you know, obviously if I had known your mom then, what if you just ate chicken and ran? <laughs> you know, right? Yep. But there is something to a simple plan that you execute on. Like all of life is about taking the complex, making it simple, and then execute. And as soon as your brain wants to complicate it, make it simple again and keep executing. And then you want to complicate it, make it simple and execute one more time, and you go, holy fuck, I did it. I got there. Um, and, and, and Joey, what, what about you? Like was there some, you know, mom, dad, and it was an internal drive to decide like, hey, there's something to be said about hard work and I'm going to lean into it? Because everyone else is leaning into comfort. Yeah. And then like I feel like we're unique birds here sitting at this table yeah. where we're just like, hey, we want to suffer. I think, you know, my parents had me working early, you know, 12 years old yeah. working. And what did you uh, do? So my first job was working in the rectory of my parish answering phones. Okay. And uh, I did that so well that I got promoted to uh, sacristan in the church. So that's the guy or the gal that sets up for like the mass and the okay. weddings and the funerals. Yeah, yeah. It's and a lot of like responsibility that. there. Yeah. It, it is early mornings, yeah. a lot of responsibility. Yeah, yeah. Right? I mean, for a kid, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yep. As a, as a young, uh, as a teenager, young yeah. teenager. And then uh, from there, uh, I started working in a funeral home, uh, doing whatever I needed to do there. So yeah. I would detail cars. I would work the door at funerals, yeah. things like that. Um, and then from there, I went to a moving truck, right? So you're seeing a pattern, right? Yeah. Like, you know, hard work got into me early. Mm -hmm. And what that helped me realize was I felt really good when I worked hard because I felt like I was accomplishing something. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? So I've just had this crazy internal drive ever since then to work hard and accomplish. Yeah. I mean, because it felt good. It like felt early good. on, you realized that it felt good to work hard, be tired, and accomplish something. Yep, yep. Now, my parents are both very hardworking. I mean, I watched them hold down two, three jobs a piece, you know, growing up. So that had something to do with it. And like I said, they exposed me to the hard work early, and I can't thank them enough for that. That's great. You know, you know, it's funny. People would reach out to me. They're like, hey, man, um, I can't sleep at night. Uh, I'm anxious. My brain's working. I, I, I'm stressed out. I'm like, you know what? Have you considered going to sleep tired? Like, what do you mean? Yeah. Empty the tank. Yeah. Go empty the tank. Yeah, yep. exactly. Go empty the tank. Just go to sleep tired. I go, what do you mean? Well, I worked a full day. Like, go and just run. And for every mile you do, do like 100 push-ups. And then run every uh, another mile, do 100 push-ups. And you do that for two hours. And you'll sure. be so exhausted that you will just fall asleep because your brain will think about nothing. The, again, it goes back to our first few words on this episode, which was everyone leans into comfort and convenience so much yep. that the tank... On every level, in terms of energy, because then what you we consume caffeine, carbohydrates, all these we consume all this energy, but then we don't put it out. Yep. And then we go, no, it's ten o'clock at night. I got to go to bed. You've done nothing to empty the tank. Yeah. Craziest thing is when you empty the tank, the next day you wake up, you have potentially more in the tank. Mm -hmm. So you go even harder the next day. Which yeah. everybody's ah, oh, if I if I empty the tank today, I'm gonna be so tired tomorrow. Actually, not. Yeah. You know, at least in my, in my eyes, my experience, if I empty, oh, the tank, I empty the tank every day, the next day, I have that much more space yeah. in the tank, yeah. you know, to go even harder. So, yeah, yeah I mean, I'm, I'm very fortunate that my parents exposed me to, to hard work um, early, and it 
I got bit by the bug, you know, the hard work bug, and I've just had that um, that drive ever since. Yeah, and you know, I read a quote. I forget who the author was. So if you all know the who the author of this quote was, you know, do a screenshot and then tag me, and uh, write down the name of the author on this uh, in your stories there. But it, it was something like the rent that we pay for our space and time on this planet is service to others. Mm -hmm. And I think that is so accurate, man. Like, and I think what ends up happening is when we're anxious, depressed, overwhelmed, stressed out, it's because we are not paying our rent. The rent is not being paid. We don't go to sleep tired, exhausted, tank empty. Mm -hmm. And subconsciously, you do have a sense of guilt. You're like, I am freeloading off this planet. And whereas we are all wired to have a sense of significance, fulfillment, it feels good to be able to do something, build something, grow something, impact something. And if you didn't, you just kind of played a video game and then screen sucked on Netflix mm -hmm. and then food showed up and out of convenience, you just, you know, squash it down your gullet and chased it with a soda or a beer just to wash it down. Like you're living like an animal. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, especially today, I think that uh, there's a lot of folks that treat life like it's a playground, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, moving from amusement to amusement, from pleasure to pleasure, mm. when it's really, it's a battleground. You should be setting up a battle for yourself on a daily basis that you have to work hard to win so that it gives you some kind of purpose and confidence. Can I just pitch you guys the next mantra? Just think, Let's I want you it. to think about Let's it. Let's do it. It's actually, I was just inspired by you. Let's do it. Life's not a playground, it's a battleground. Yeah. Like, that, you, you nailed it. It really is a battleground. Like, every day, we, we should, I mean, I heard someone say, like, we're like nine meals away from literally killing our neighbor, which is, you know, three days of not eating. Mm -hmm. Like, the yeah. moment your family doesn't have three square meals a day for three days in a row, you're about to go attack your neighbor and take their food and their water, et cetera. Like, yeah. the, the, a battle is going to ensue, literally. Yeah. And Lord knows there's a battle in our heart, a battle in our head, a battle at work to keep our, keep our job, run our business, working mm -hmm. against the competition. And yet everyone's treating life as a playground. Uh, that's such a powerful, powerful example that you laid out there. So going back to then, so you guys are having these conversations when you're driving home from work. And of course, you're like, hey, everybody wants to eat, but few will hunt. Um, as soon as I read that on the t-shirt, I'm like, that's it. That's it. Everybody wants to be the CEO, but few are willing to make CEO decisions. Yep. Like at the end of the day, every single person in my company can turn to someone else and go, Hey, what do I do? Mm -hmm. The only person that I, I can't turn to anyone, like the buck starts and stops here. Like yep. I got no one to turn to and go, what do I do? Like, yep. I got to make a decision. I got to make the moves. I got to take the risks and I got to live with the consequences. Sure. And so not a lot of people want that role and responsibility, yet they love the lifestyle and, and all the perks that come with it. And so as you guys are making this brand, one thing that I noticed about the gear that you're selling is it is like really super high quality stuff. Was it an intentional thing, especially when you're, you guys weren't really funded. It's not like you guys each put $100,000 yeah. out of your pocket. No, no. We, so you could have used cheaper shirts and sold more shit. You went super high quality. What's what's the, the mindset eight. there? So, well, real quick, we've used every, every bit of it has been savings and just yep. our own hard earned money. We were working to fund our business, is what we were doing in, yeah. our, in our day jobs. Yep. But from the beginning, we, Joey and I always said quality is going to come first. We're going to differentiate on quality, quality of uh, community, quality of products, and quality of service. And from the beginning, we were always using the top quality threads, top quality manufacturing, and at first it was not profitable at all for us because we were, our cost of goods were so high that we were not making any profit. The unit and, economics were yeah. trash, they just didn't work. Right. But we, we committed, we were like, one day we're going to sell this many shirts and we're going to drive this cost down to this to X dollar and we're going to actually be a profitable business. Mm -hmm. and. We stayed true to that from the beginning because that was literally we made a pact of that that was quality quality products yep. and that's what we did and it finally got us. I mean, money. when you really look at the start line, like 2018 was your start line. Yep. Right. Yep. And here we are in 2021. You guys are a seven-figure company, and what doing a thousand orders a month, mm -hmm. right? At least over, over. over. at yeah. least at least, and so quality of community 
guys and gals listen to this as you're as you're building your companies like these are non-negotiable quality of community quality of product and quality of service and that's what we've built truly on that's what we built fit body boot camp on that's what i built the project on if you're like why is the project so expensive it's like because i have literally the best in class in instructors the best in class in venue the follow-up the lifelong brotherhood that you belong in and the and the annual two meetups that we do every year like all those things are literally designed on quality that are not negotiable for me. I could make it cheaper, yep. and but I but I wouldn't. It would cheapen the experience. It would cheapen the outcome. And and this is what you guys have built. If you will hunt on. Um, what are some of the learning lessons? Like if you had someone sitting across from you and they're like, "Hey, man, I'm about to start my own brand. Could be apparel. Could be a movement in terms of." anything could be a supplement line but i'm going to sell it using social media the interwebs what are some of the big lessons you're going to give them yeah. first and foremost i would say keep it simple right um if you are kind of like what we were speaking about earlier analysis by paralysis if you're yeah. going to sit and analyze what's the perfect platform yeah. you know what's the perfect plug-in what's the perfect keep it simple start moving take action first and foremost when we were having our calls um, on a daily basis you know what i mean when we were full-time employed we would come up with a simple action item every evening for, yeah. for each one of us you remember yeah. that yeah, right yeah. oh yeah one thing that we could do to just move the ball forward down the field that night just move the ball forward that's it yeah, movers. yep and we kept it very simple you know which it helps to be good at compartmentalizing right because mm -hmm. there's a lot going on yeah but if you can just focus on one simple thing daily and take that action um it will yield you know they'll have a high yield from it so keep it simple would be one of the things i would say for sure yeah i would also say provide value i, mean, I feel like that was always our core one of our core focuses was like mm -hmm. we're not just selling t-shirts we're providing our community value and that's one thing i see people lose sight of in any business nowadays is they just want to sell 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 they don't even yep. stop to think how is anyone benefiting from this product or how am i delivering value on a, on a consistent basis to my community or my customers mm. so we've always focused on i mean we focus on value first and beginning to a fault as we said but we were always value focused yeah. Yeah. that's why you also have such a loyal following too <laughs> I believe so because you know we've always we made a pact to do right by our community members you know and that that uh, three prong quality approach that drew mentioned i mean it was rooted in the fact that we're going to provide more value than we get in return so in other words we're going to provide so much value for this shirt that you're going to buy at yeah x amount of dollars that it just makes sense yeah you know and you want to you want to wear it you know what i mean because of your association and membership in the community agreed i think also part of the reason why you want to wear it so bad is like what Peter just said earlier is he opened the box and he read the he read fuel hunt everyone would see but fuel hunt and he was like i fucking get that like that's it yeah and either you get it or you don't either you're one of the few or you're not yeah, yeah. you know i think going back to the battleground we each we each have the first battle i think we each face every day is one in our own minds right mm -hmm. so for drew and i being able to wear a piece of apparel that reminds us what we're made of, the potential that we have, and what we can accomplish on a daily basis is important. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's literally is important. To it's, us. it's exactly what it is. Like every day you wake up, when when you wear, when I wear anything, few will hunt. It is a reminder. I mean, average is the enemy. One of my favorite uh, uh, shirts that you guys sent me. Um, everybody wants to eat, but few will hunt. Grit. Com uh, what, was, what was the one with the comfort? Pain, um, the pain, pain. pain. Comfort is pain. a slow death. Yeah. Comfort is a slow death. I love that. Comfort is exactly that. It's a slow death. That shirt, like, you know, comfort is a slow death, right? Prefer, Pre prefer pain. pain. Yeah, prefer pain. Someone will read that and go, why would you want to prefer pain? Why would you want to prefer adversity and, and discomfort? Like, and if they don't get it, they are just not part of this community. And what I love about the brand is that it is so polarizing. Mm -hmm. And part of that might be because I, f I, know, I know I'm a polarizing figure because I'm either loved or hated. There's not a lot of in-between. I either get like love mail 
messages or like death threats. <laughs> um, but I also think when you're launching any kind of business, like Elon Musk, he's like, this is how a car needs to be like. They're like, yeah, but it doesn't need to, no, it does. It needs to be just like this, not yeah. what Honda or, or, or Chevy or, or Ford is doing. And he's a very polarizing figure and you either mm -hmm. love him or you hate him, but there is no in between. Um, was this an intentional thing for you guys? Yeah, it was. It was. I mean, the, the strength of it. We wanted our messages to be strong and bold, yeah. right? Because your 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 own mind is pretty polarizing, right? Yeah. You can get up out of bed and your mind says, ah, you just don't have it today. Yeah. You know, the, the self-talk starts, the self-talk, negative self-talk starts and it starts beating you down. And it's strong and it's bold, that self-talk. It holds people back from achieving what they're truly meant to achieve in life sometimes, yeah. right? So what we wanted to do was create a whole line of shirts that when you pull your drawer open, you start flipping through, am I gonna wear my luck favors hard worker shirt today? Am I gonna wear my comfort as a slow death? And you're just rewiring your mind. I'm gonna fly this flag and it's telling me what I need to do and what I'm capable of and I'm gonna go do it. Boom. And like you said, I feel like just because we're in the place we don't, we don't have that drawer. A lot of people have that drawer because that's, like, <laughs> that's the fuse uniform for the day. You know yeah. what I mean? We're all, even you, but you're like, what 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 few hunts are I gonna put on today to let people know that I'm one of the few yeah. and I'm not I'm not like I'm not like you you know what yeah. I mean like I'm not like that person standing behind me in line yeah. in the yeah. store but yeah and you know what's funny is when I when I when I wear the shirts the people who get it don't just go like hey I like your shirt they're like dude that's an awesome like okay. they they react like they react yeah. and you can tell like they're, they're they're part of the community maybe they're not following few will hunt on Instagram maybe they haven't bought a shirt but they get, they get the it. mantra yeah, any yeah, one of the mantras it. they get you know because i've been told plenty of times oh man you are lucky to be the ceo of so many companies motherfucker who reached out to me in 2020 and said i'm lucky to be the ceo of a fitness franchise yeah. when the coronavirus sure. was just like shutting us down left and right sure. you know what i mean uh and, and so luck does favor the hard workers yeah. and and when you wear that shirt and when things aren't going your way and you happen to catch a glimpse of yourself in the mirror you're like wait a minute Yep. I don't know how to get lucky right now. I just got to stop being a little bitch and start working yep. harder. Like, that's how For I sure. build my luck, For right? Sure. Yep. And then when I lean into comfort, because I'm human, comfort just kind of sets in. It's like, hey, 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 wait a minute. This is a slow death. Like, yep. literally, like, you can see what's in your closet and you're wearing it. You're wearing motivation and inspiration and, like, this almost like a blueprint of what you ought to do that day. And so, for me, I was telling you guys, like, in my closet, Marlon, my, our house manager, has, like, all my all my shirts are color coded mm -hmm. and um and since majority of the stuff i wear black it's blue because it's date night tonight <laughs> um going fancy with the wife but um marlon's got all of my stuff color coded and uh, i'll literally go through and it's almost like picking like what level of inspiration do i need today what's your attitude going to be yeah. today yeah. What, what is my attitude going to be today? Am yep. I just going to walk around like, hey, you know what? I don't want to be average because that's the enemy. Or, you know what? Comfort is a slow pain. Like, what is my attitude going to be? And it is so cool to be able to don that, to be able yep. to wear that, and to be able to represent that. And, like, people either get it or they don't. Yeah. Yeah, some messages are intentionally bold. I mean, the shirt wouldn't do its job if it said prefer discomfort or just go half comfort today. Yeah. You know, it's prefer pain. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's what you're shooting for. Yeah. What is it about pain that really helps people evolve, grow, move forward? I mean, clearly there's something that you guys have figured out because it's, it's part of the brand. Yeah, I, I mean, me personally, I think it, it introduces you to who you truly are. And you may not like who you meet initially, mm -hmm. but that's a revelation in itself, right? Mm -hmm. Because then you can say, I have some work to do. There's some growth to be done here. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, I think our minds work, work a lot like our, our muscle, you know what I mean? They got to be broken down and they build up. And pain, trans, preferring pain transfers to all different aspects of life. It's not just in the gym. Like we, yes, are you probably getting in the gym if you're one of the few? Most likely because we believe in building that muscle. But also you're stepping out of the comfort zone in your career, in your promotion. like you're working harder for a promotion or you're starting a new business or you're making your relationship better with your with your spouse like there's just all other ways of preferring discomfort that make you a better human yeah and it starts with getting uncomfortable and preferring pain yeah, yeah. i think you dropped something that is super powerful i'm going to repeat it for our audience 
and that is that your mind is very much like a muscle and it needs to be broken down to be able to get rebuilt stronger. And for those of you that don't know, since I'm a nationally certified personal trainer, actually my certification has expired about <laughs> 20 years ago, but I was an A certified personal trainer many, many years ago. Um, what you don't know that, you know, when you're, when you're working out in the gym, you're not actually building any muscle, you're tearing your muscle fibers down. You're tearing your muscles down and under a microscope, there's these microscopic tears in your muscle fibers. And then your muscles go, holy crap, this guy curled, whatever, 45 pound dumbbells and tore us down. We need to start getting stronger so that 45 pound dumbbells can't tear us down. Next time you use 50 pound dumbbells and 55, etc. And so you keep adding more muscle tissue, but the breaking down happens in the gym. You're not getting in any, you're not getting in shape. You're actually breaking down. That's the soreness that you feel. The rebuilding is where we get stronger, more resilient. And so the mind is no different. And that breakdown must happen. The microscopic tears must happen to create neuroplasticity and new neural pathways. And when you do, you're like, man, I'm, my synapses are firing faster. I have a wider zone of discomfort. Mm -hmm. You know, like some people just kind of lean into the sides of their comfort zone, like that's enough. Yep. You keep leaning into the sides of your comfort zone, it expands and it's like, holy crap, man, I could really step into a lot of discomfort sure. and I'm comfortable in that area. Um, and, and so that's a really powerful point, Drew, that you made is that you gotta break the mind down in order to break build it up stronger. Without it, there, there is no other way. I wish I can say, go read a book and understand the concepts of resiliency. You could read a book and understand the concept of resiliency, resourcefulness, uh, how to be relentless, but go and suffer. Go, go. When the sun goes down tomorrow, start hiking and do not stop hiking your city until the sun comes back up, until you see the sunrise. Um, I did that with a group of uh, five other people here from HQ last December 5th. Mm -hmm. uh, I called it Suck Fest. Hey, we're gonna do Suck Fest. Love so it. basically you're awake all day and then at night, instead of sleeping, sun goes down, start hiking the hills of Chino Hills. We did 37 miles in 13 hours and it was without training on purpose so that you could feel the pain, you could feel the blisters under your feet, your knees were swollen, but you just keep going through. And before the cameras went on, I was like, hey, when we do it, I get to meet the best side of me and I get to meet the darkest side of me. I see the light and the dark, which reminds me of another shirt that y'all sent me recently, which was, help me, was it the Reaper? Reaper T, yes. Yeah, which was, was it go through your darkness and- Pass through your darkness, live in your light. Pass through your darkness, live in your light. Like yep. literally every single mantra that's on the shirts, I live. I realize like you put yourself through so much discomfort where you're hungry, you're tired, it was December 5th, so it was cold, um, nighttime. Cops are stopping us because six people walking through the hills of Cheeto Hills, like what the hell are you guys doing, right? Sure. I was like, uh, we're just gonna keep doing this until the sun comes up. They're like, all right, go, uh, have a good time. And by that morning, you're like, I just did something that like more than a marathon, like that was the equivalent of a like, you know, 37 miles. And I think that qualifies as some kind of something. Um, and so anyway, this December 4th, we're doing Suckfest again of 2021. And this time uh, the goal is to literally do two exercises and BK strength in the gym, run out the front door, run around the building, uh, which is two tenths of a mile. And we do that 137 rounds of that, which should last between 12 to 15 hours. And we'll have done a full marathon and over 4,000 reps. Uh, just imagine the level of soreness. Hey, is that right? overnight too? What's that? Is that ever night or is that daytime? I'm lobbying for don't doing it at my, night don't give so, my that, ideas, so that, you know, because if we do it at night, we'll also be sleep deprived, yeah. right? And just that's just a whole new level of fuck uppery. Yeah. Um, some of the people who are softer around here, uh, not necessarily in this room, because I know Ed's a savage, um, but some of the people are like, man, you know what? If we did it during the day, if we start at 5 a.m., we'll probably be done by like 6, 7, or 8 p.m. We can all go to dinner afterwards. I'm like, dinner? Like, yeah. what? We're going to sleep You drink hungry. water. We're going to sleep hungry. <laughs> yeah, you drink water and you go to sleep, yeah, you know? Sure. So anyway, we'll, we'll see how it unfolds. But either way, it's going to suck because it's suck fest. But the whole idea is uh, actually a Japanese tradition called misogi, mm -hmm. um, which is like you cleanse, you do something very difficult that's unlikely to get finished. Uh, it's so hard on you. Uh, it's a cleansing for the new year to come. And that's kind of where I got the idea of it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so... Guys, uh, kind of big takeaways. If if, if people uh, 
so, someone starting a business, someone looking to transform in their health and their fitness and their mindset and their relationship, what are some big breakthroughs that you guys have had? Because you've had such a meteoric growth in your business that I know has come from this byproduct of just choosing intentionally to, to go through pain and adversity. What are some feedback that you can give folks who can leapfrog in life? I think lean into what works is something that sticks with me. Is like we were trying all different things and then one thing would work and then we were like, let's do more of that. So that I feel like applies to business or health. You know what I mean? If if cardio is working, then keep doing more. Then do a little more cardio. Keep doing more until cardio stops working, and then figure out something else. And same with business. So if one ad's working, lean to that ad, and then ad, that ad might dry up, mm -hmm. and then you have to move over to something else. But yep. I think that would be one big takeaway for me when we're starting this business. I think it's for a sure. great takeaway. For sure, yeah. Going back to keeping it simple which, you know, is what we did, pick one thing. Um, I would say sacrifice. You're not going to get around it. Yeah. It must be done, yeah. you know. So if you're um, serious about starting a business and making it successful, strap in because there's going to be sacrifice. You're going to mm -hmm. be sacrificing your time. You're going to be with your loved ones, not necessarily just your me time, your time with your loved ones, your family, your wife, your kids. You're going to be sacrificing your money, your ego. I can go on and on. Yeah. yeah. So sa sacrifice is uh, is key. You need to be uh, extremely comfortable with it for many years now. We've done nothing but. That's the magic, the consistency of sacrifice. You know, anyone can do any one thing once, right? Mm -hmm. People are like, yeah, I made it through the project. I'm like, hey, listen, the project, the 75 hours of the project wasn't like the magic. It's whoever you discovered during the project when you flipped that switch and chose not to ring the bell, Mm -hmm. and choose to lead, communicate, problem solve, and use teamwork, that has to get carried on to the rest of your life. You can stop doing that when you die. And they're like, oh shit, I get what the project is all about now. Sure. I discovered this new version of me yep. and I need to carry this person with me from this day forward. And flipping that switch to turn that person on, right? It's not just, I mean, you have to do hard things. You almost yes. have to recreate the project. That's you exactly to, it. You have to make an obstacle course for yourself in life. Mm -hmm to bring that person back out. And the more and more you do that, yeah. I think then you you become that person on a more consistent basis. Nailed it, nailed it. You know, it's funny you say that, right? Because like every year I do something hard like that, like 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 the suck fest. But then I can't just wait for that year, that date to come in December. So every week, every Sunday, I train legs for two hours because I just know I can beat the crap out of my legs and then I'll go attack the hills for an hour and do a hike. It is the most uncomfortable hike, especially at 230 pounds. Like I'm not light on my feet. Yep. And so I do that because it's almost like I got this mini misogi that takes place every Sunday that resets me and reminds me of the, of the, of the savage that I am and the capabilities that I have right before my hardest day of the week comes Monday. Mm -hmm. You know, it's Monday, very intentional. Hard. Yeah, yep. exactly. Uh, which I was going to say, I attack Monday, mm -hmm. and then there's the attack. Sh I, I shit you not, this seems like it's a commercial for Fuel Hunt. It is not. It, but, like, literally everything about the brand, yeah. like, literally, the, the, you have a shirt. It's like black on black attack. And I yeah. love that because on those days that I want to just intentionally go heavy on whatever it is I'm going to do uh, in work and in, in, in life and in business, all right, I'm going to wear that attack shirt. All those designs, those badges that end up on our apparel were all inspired by events and difficulties and challenges that we had while while we were building this community mm -hmm. and ultimately this business. Yeah. You know, yeah. we didn't sit around a table and say what would be cool to put on a shirt. We sat around a table and said, what are we living through right now? Yeah. And yeah. how can we create a bold strong message that reminds us of the action that we took to get through it and share that with others. Mm -hmm. Good point. So if our friends want to learn more about the two of you and the Fuel Hunt brand, what's the best way to get in contact or connect? Yeah, uh, on Instagram at Fuel Hunt or FuelHunt.com. Best way to do it. And by the way, guys, if you're watching or listening to this and you end up going to FuelHunt.com and you buy something, do me a favor, man. When you wear it, uh, take a picture of yourself, share it in your stories, and I want you to tag me 
and I, and I will reshare it. I want you to tag me and I will reshare it. And I want you to tag, of course, Fuel Hunt as well. And I'm sure these guys will reshare it. And, and the reason is, I, I always describe Fuel Hunt as a movement instead of an, it's not an apparel company. I, I just feel like it's a downgrade to call it at a clothing company and apparel. It's a movement. It and the movement is long overdue of restoring the dignity of hard work um, and you guys are leading the charge and you guys are doing it in such a awesome way where it's quality is non-negotiable mm -hmm. and uh, in, in the most polarizing way, which I love um, about the brand. We're just getting started. And you're just getting started. We're just getting started. Exactly. This is the very beginning. Well, listen, thank you so much for joining me on this episode. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Appreciate you guys. And as always, guys, be sure to leave us a five-star review on the iTunes and uh, great comments. Share this episode. And don't you forget to tell your mama. See ya.